Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of My Testimony. Now, in this program, we take time to analyze a few from the many thousands of miracles that God is working out through the hands of Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. Today, our guest on the program is Tiwanechi Mbewe, all the way from Zambia. Let us welcome him. Let's welcome him, let's welcome him, let's welcome him. Tuanechi, welcome to my testimony. Mama, welcome to my testimony. Please be seated. Thanks. Now, before I can allow you to say anything, Let's ask our media team just to give us a short clip of what transpired. Who brought this man? Explain to me what is happening. It was revealed that he was supposed to go to the studies overseas. Uh -huh. Now what happened after some time he was disappointed. The KCM company was the one who was supposed to take him abroad. Uh -huh. Now due to the sponsorship from the company, then he started to stop talking. It was not eating, it was not bathing, it was just sitting at one place. Not eating, not taking a bath, not yes. doing anything? Yes. He just went quiet? Yes. Ha! What is that? What could that be, doctor? Can that be explained? <laughs> Men of God, medically, it's difficult to explain it. I want to believe that was you in the picture there. Yes. Now, can you tell us what were you going through? Well, a lot. Uh, I, okay, I, I, I actually had balance problems. I couldn't balance well. Uh, I was numb. Uh, my body, I, I couldn't control my fingers. Sometimes they could, they could, they could have that clicking sound. In your Was fingers? Stiff, yes. I, I had problems walking and I wasn't, I wasn't myself. It's, I was just stuck in between the earth and somewhere. I wasn't, I wasn't You myself. were stuck in between the earth and somewhere you don't know. Yes. So obviously, you can't tell us much. Mama, it's over to you. What is your son, right? I have to thank you. This one, after finishing his grade 12, he, did, he started going for A levels. So the e is, uh, CE, CE, they promised him that after you finish the A levels, we'll send you abroad for a scholarship. They'll give him scholarship. Then the company said, no, we can't do that because we, we don't have money this time. So from there, after he heard that news, he had to lock himself in the room, no eating, no talking to other people, anything was just confined in the bedroom. Then from there, if somebody goes there, he can just lock the bedroom. By chance, you take off the, the kids then he can't lock himself. Then he started hitting himself uh, to the wall. Hitting himself to the wall, then we were just... By hitting watching. himself to the wall, do you mean like hitting the wall with his fist or throwing himself against the just wall? Just using his head, just using his head. Going into the wall like this. From there, I can just be sitting in the corner 
without putting on a shoes or anything mm -hmm. or just a cloth and he, he couldn't change he, he didn't want to change anything he was just there if you give him food he, uh, he can just mix them together he put food in the water but without eating them so from there uh, some people said no advice from people they said no maybe the environment take him somewhere I took him to, uh, to Malawi. Malawi there, I couldn't change. There they decided to take him to the hospital. From the hospital... But bef before he went to Malawi, had you ever taken him to any hospitals in Zambia? Yes, I did. I, did. I, I took him to the hospital. They tested everything. Eh? Uh, full blood counter. Then they said he's got nothing. He's okay. Even HIV... Because the way he's behaving, we, we thought that is a loss of memory sometimes. If he's positive, he's go, uh, that's the way they do some. So they did everything. They said, no, he's negative. This boy is just okay. Then they gave him medicine. From there, it made him worse. It made him worse. Now... Sorry, the medicine they gave him, if they said, we've checked and this boy is okay, what medicine did they prescribe for him? What was it to correct? They just wanted him to be sleeping. If he sleeps, he couldn't wake up. Maybe for two days. He's just lying in the bed. No eating. No eating. So I said, what type of these drugs is just too much? Then I stopped him. I said, no, this is too much. How can somebody be sleeping for two days without seeing him? Then, then I invited my brother from Malawi. So he came and he, helped, he took him. They went together. Me, I remained home. There he took him to the hospital. There they said again, they asked, what type of drug did he, they give this boy? I just SMS that drug to the, to the doctor. Then the doctor said, no, this is the wrong medicine. As we are going to start him, uh, another me, me, dosage. Then they started giving him a different dosage again. There, numbness a bit, but he was not all that, uh, he was not getting better, so I can say. Then my brother, they stayed there for a month. Then my brother said, this, we are not going anywhere. If they go for review there, they say, keep on giving him some drugs. So they said, so there's nothing I can do. That's my, my, my brother said so. So he decided to bring him over. Then my brother said, let's meet somewhere uh, in Chipata, near Malawi, at the border post. Then I went there again. We, I went there to pick them up. When, when you met him at the border in Chipata, yeah. was he looking any better? Was he... He was worse because you can, I could even see the eyes twisted now. This, this, the uh, pew pew, like yes. pew, going the other way, even the other side. You it mean like look, one eye is facing this side yes, and uh, this eye is facing that yes, side? Yes, he, he was not looking straight. So my brother, when coming with him, we could uh, give him some, some um, sunglasses for him to at least not to draw attention of people. I can imagine. Mm -hmm. And whilst this is happening, you are not even aware of... <laughs> okay, my... I was... I was convinced within myself. Uh, I think I was all right. That's what I told myself. You are telling yourself, I, I think I'm okay. I'm okay. But the people around me were saying, no, you are not okay. You're not, you're, not, you're not looking the you. I can imagine, Mama, your son, he is going through all that. You are looking up to him. He's just passed well and he's going to the next stage of life. What were you thinking? It was terrible. I had no peace. I was not comfortable. I was not happy at all. I was, I was very, very sad, indeed. So from there is when um, 
I took him to the one of the churches there. <laughs> the way they were praying again, they could put him. Where is this now? In in, in Chipata. In Chipata. Now. Yeah. Okay. Our friend, that's the uh, introduced us there to, to that church. They could be singing some song to him. We stayed there for a week. Then I said, "There is no change. Let us just go back to our place." I, we went together. Even my brother said that now I cannot leave. You can let us just go together. Then we came to to Chilabombe together. They they prayed for him for one week and there was no change. Yes. Until he decided, no, we are not winning. Let's go back home. Yes, it's me now deciding. I'm sorry. I'll have to cut you short there. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll just take a short break. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to the second segment of today's My Testimony. Our guest on the program today is Tione Chimbewe, who has an awesome, awesome, awesome testimony. Mama, before you can continue, let me call once more upon my very good friend, Dr. Mtewe, just to come and give us a medical view of what was transpiring. Let's welcome the good doctor. Thank you so much. Now, I don't know if you are the right person to call. I saw on the video there, you were a bundle of confusion. You were saying medically it, it cannot be explained. Have you done a research and looked into what was happening to this young man? Yes, man of God, I think now I can explain not everything, but some of it. You know, the problem with my medical field is we are physical. We deal mainly with the physical, and we are strictly limited to the physical. And if something happens to somebody which is spiritual, there is kind of a denial in our field. And that is what was happening to him. What we tend to do is we group up a number of symptoms and we give them names so that at least we can be able to manage the physical things which are occurring in a human being. So from my brother here, he had symptoms of what is called schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a mental illness which causes one to behave like he's not part of the society. He was hearing some voices. The mother was saying he would hear people talking to him. No one else would see those people. He's just hearing voices. We call them auditory hallucinations. He was having hallucinations. And spiritually it can be explained, but medically we just call them hallucinations. And you end there? We end there, yes. And in addition to that, he was like somebody who was dissociated from the society. And he also had a condition which we call catatonia. Catatonia is when like you want to move you can't move your body is like it's frozen in one condition the mother was telling me that you would just maybe sit in one position and you wouldn't change or you would stand and stretch his arm and you will be in that position for even hours without changing so it's like he's locked inside he wants to do something but the body is frozen mama he would stretch his hand and then be in that position for hours like I am doing now. Yes. In, in that position or down, it points down the finger, just like this, for a long time. If you try to remove the hand, then he, he goes back, just like that. So medically, we call that catatonia. It's like somebody, your body is now frozen. Your joints, your muscles, even the speech, all the actions are now frozen. Inside, the person inside is trying to do something, but the body is like, it's refusing. It's like there's now a battle between the person inside and the physical body on the outside. Okay, maybe this explains it, because he says I was caught in a position somewhere between the earth and another world out there. This is 
how he puts it, he's trying to explain that probably the inner man wants to do this, but the body is responding in a different way. Most likely, that's exactly what he's describing. The inner man was already somewhere else. The body was trying to do something, but these two were no longer working together or moving together. There was a dissociation between the inner man and the physical man. Now, obviously, as doctors, you'd always try and do something. They prescribed drugs for him, and the drugs, like the mother is alluding to, they only made him worse. There was no positive change. The only change there was negative. Is this uh, condition curable? Were the and doctors doing something wrong, or they really tried their best? Well, I wouldn't blame the doctors. The doctors were giving him something to kind of tranquilize him, to calm him down. Because, mind you, somebody who was violent sometimes, you would hit the wall, you would be a danger to himself, and a danger to even the people around him. So sometimes in those conditions, doctors will give drugs which can make one drowsy or sleepy. But sometimes those drugs can overdo it and make you sleep for a long time. So we'll now be choosing between him being awake, injuring himself and other people, or him being asleep, and maybe just waking him up and give him food, just that. So it's just a choice between those two, but those drugs, they don't reverse the condition. You are just controlling the, the symptoms only. So this is just like a temporary measure to sedate him and then get some peace from him at least. Yes, it's just a temporary measure and just hoping that somewhere, somehow, something will happen to reverse it. Now, Mama, the doctors in Zambia have failed. The doctors in Malawi have failed. You took him to another church. I'm sure you're beginning to sense that only the spiritual is my option. You took him to that church. They prayed for him for a week. Nothing was changing. Now you're back home, but you still have the problem. Your son is not well. I just uh, heard people were saying, no, take him to Pastor Ennis. There's one who is preaching here. You haven't heard that you have heard about it. Yeah, take him there. At least that man is going to do something. I said, okay, I'll meet him to the church. So I went to the church. I'm sorry, I have to cut you short. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you are itching to hear what transpired next. But we just have to take a short break. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to the third and final segment of part two of this week's edition of My Testimony. Our guest on the program this morning is uh, Tiwanechi Mbewe, who has an amazing testimony to share with us. Before we went for the break, you were just telling us that some people advised you to take your son to a particular church. Yes. Then I went there on Sunday service. They preached after the service. I, uh, I find Pastor Ennis, I said, Pastor, I want to see you. Then he came closer to me. What can I do for you? He, I said, I've brought this son to you specifically. Me, I've failed what to do. I've tried, but I've failed. He looked at him. He was very sad. He was disturbed, the pastor himself. Then he said, I think, you know, me, the only people who can help us I think we have to take him to Prophet Emmanuel Imakandiro. Okay, I understand we have Pastor Ernest in the house. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, help me to welcome Pastor Ernest. Welcome the man of God. 
Pastor Ernest, welcome to my testimony. I want you to sit right close to me so that I can get all the information. Please take a seat. Now, you're just telling us that he then said to you, the only person that can help us is Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa in Zimbabwe. Pastor Ernest, how long have you been in ministry? Uh, it's about now 14 years. 14 years. Yes. And um, you looked at Tiwanechi. Did you pray for him? I tried, but the decision I made is to bring him here. Okay. Because I was here in uh, November. I saw what the man of God was doing in many lives. I, I, I was able to see the miracles. So it really touches me that the only man that can do it is Prophet Emmanuel Makandia. Let me ask you this question. How did you come to hear of Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa? At first, I was watching TV. That's where I saw the Prophet was praying for somebody who was broken a leg. And uh, I saw him healed that person instant, and they started walking. From that time, that's when I started hearing about him. I was just listening to them people. I was not watching him on the TV. That's when my spirit was just connected that this man is a man of God. Then you made a decision to come. Yes, sir. All right. That's interesting. Now, Pastor Ernest says that to you, that the only man that can help you is Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa in Harare. What's next? I couldn't even hesitate because I was so desperate. I wanted him to be healed and to go back to school. I had no choice I've got because I didn't have any hope for the things which he was doing. So I said, no, just take him wherever. Me, I'm ready. We we'll try to look for oh whatever transport whatever we can do that I can do that help us. Then uh, three days later they started off the journey. They started off the journey. Two of them. He was not talking. So you didn't come with them. No. You no. left him in the hands of Pastor yes. Ernest. Yes. Okay. Yes, I said no. Just to go with him. Me, I'm remaining behind. Because me, I've traveled, I've failed, but now this time, I've given to you. Now, do the best to him. That's the only question. All right, so they are on their way, but what were your relatives saying? They wanted very much to be hearing the condition of him, my, uh, the, the boy. Then he said, well, how is he, the son? I said, hmm. They have gone to Harari. To Harari to do what? I said they have gone to to, to Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. Yeah, she she laughed. She said, Ah, praise God. That's the life decision which you have made. That man we have heard. My sister, don't worry, that boy is not coming the same. This is your sister in South Africa now. Yes. She's saying you've made the right decision. Yes, right decision. That boy will never come the same. And don't worry about it. Me, I've got no doubt about it. You have just to thank the man of God who have just directed you to there. When they were here. Yes. And on Sunday, truly, they were in the service here. They prayed to him. And I just received a phone call from here. It was a Sunday service. Huh? A man of God, I, go, I don't know exactly. I just had the phone call. You just got a call from here? Yeah, yes. They asked me, are you the mother to, to an age? I said, yes. 
So I thought, I don't know what is coming now. What is this? I can, I can imagine. I can imagine. Then they said, talk to your son. son and they gave him the, they, they gave him the phone. He said, Mom, how are you? Me, I'm fine here. I, I screamed. I started crying. I couldn't answer back. I was with, started crying with joy because the voice which I heard for the first time, that's the voice which I used to hear from him. I said, this is Tione Chiriri. The voice have come back. This is a real Tione. I was so happy. When I was just crying in the house, when I was just crying in the house, then children came to me, they said, why are you crying, man? I said, no, Tionich is healed. He is healed now, Tionich is not the same. They said, now why are you crying? <laughs> Tears of joy. It's how I came to, 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 to be now uh, settled. My mind, everything was settled. Without even seeing now, I was very happy. And I when can was imagine just, the joy. Yeah. And when they came back from Harari... Before we go there, ma'am, just for your benefit, let me ask our media team to show us what happened, what transpired. I transfer life into you. Everything in your body becomes active. Now. In the name of Jesus. This is how we do it. We okay, speak okay. life into you. Life into you. Life into you. In Jesus' name, I call you back. You are recovered. You are restored. In Jesus' mighty name. You! In Jesus' precious name. Oh my God. His name is Jesus. He raises the dead. Just look at him. There is something happening right there. Look at that. Man of God is looking more present now. He was far away a few minutes ago. He's looking more present now. In He's the name of present. Jesus, the man is being recovered, coming from another place where he was lost. Come. Follow me. Jesus. 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 Say Jesus. Jesus. Let's do an interview. What is your name? Tony. Come, 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 come close.
Look at the colleague. Just look at the colleague. He knows the intensity. Man of God, there is something which I noticed as the man of God was praying to him. In the medical field, as we study the brain, there's an area of the brain which controls speech, and it's on the front, on the left side. And as the man of God was praying for him, we call it the Broca's area. That's exactly where he was touching, the part which controls the speech. And I know the man of God is a prophet. He doesn't just do actions for just doing actions. And as he was saying, I'm activating the body. He was touching the exact area which controls speech in the body. I don't know whether I studied neurology or not. I don't know. But remember, remember, he is the doctor of doctors, right? Yes, man of God. But the amazing thing also is that, you know, the information that he got, he was able to pick it up prophetically because he's saying, I call you back to life. Yes. And Tionechi is just confirming that he was in between the earth and another, another area world. out there, yes. which means there was no life in him. Yes. And yet the man of God is able to call him back to life, to re-inhabit this body. Yes. As the man of God was praying for him, you could see his right arm, Tionechi's right arm. Yes. It was in this position. It was just frozen in one position. And all of a sudden, he could put it down. Yes, and God. he began to follow the man of God. Yes. And even <laughs> run after him. I can see, Mama, you're laughing now. This is, this is all of a sudden become a laughing matter for you. You're laughing at Pastor Ernest as he's rolling on the floor. <laughs> you're All right, because of time, just one more question. Now that you're back to life, what's next? The illness really, it was a drawback. When the man of God prayed for me, just, just right after he prayed for me, as I started running, that's, that's when I felt that that burden has been lifted off my shoulders. It's, it's, it's gone. And when it's, it's over a sudden, I was, Everything that was happening, to me, it was like I'm back to myself. I could no longer feel the numbness. It was That's gone. Right. It was gone. When I slept the, the following day, everything came back to normal. You, you see, when he, when he touched me, that's, that's when I, I realized that my body was just, I was apart. I wasn't, I wasn't okay. Because to me, I was like, ah, but when I'm taking these medicines, I think I'm all right. I'll be fine. But when he prayed for me, that's when I actually, it was, it was a big burden that was on my shoulders. So what plans do you have? Do you want to go to back to school? Do you want to go back to obviously you are reading and writing as, as best as you can? Yes, on, on that one, now I need to get myself into school. Since, since I can read, I can write normally. Because I, I couldn't even hold the pen. My handwriting was jitterish. I couldn't, I couldn't write the way I used to do in school. It's like I, all of a sudden lost that art. So you want to go back to school? Yes. There you have it, people. This really is a touching, touching, touching testimony. You can imagine the pain that this lady went through. She really suffered. Only for God to work out an astonishing miracle through the hand of Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. <laughs> Doctor, it's my pleasure having you on the program. Mama, thank you so much. Tiwanechi, hope to hear from you soon. Man of God, thank you so much. God bless you.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are in that season wherein if you have anything around you that is dead, God has raised up a prophet. God has raised up a prophet. We just want to tap into the same anointing. If you have anything that is dying or anything that is dead around you, I just want you to take advantage of this moment, take advantage of the anointing that is prevailing in the house, lift up your voice and begin to speak life over every area, every facet of your life. Come on, lift up that voice. 